Misfortune is an obscure game for the original Game Boy. Since no known hard copies or ROMs exist, all information from the game is derived from personal accounts and <laughs> scant assemblages of screenshots. The game does not contain any credits and whoever created it is still unknown to this day. The few people who have experienced it, however, consider it to be one of the most scariest, creepiest, and nauseating video games that they ever played, despite the low quality of the original Game Boy. Given its age and the cult following among rare horror game enthusiasts, it's entirely possible that the authors of widely known creepypastas such as Sonic.exe and Lavender Town Syndrome draw some inspiration from misfortune. The player controls what appears to be a young boy in an odd, strange gothic building. After brief exploring, the player is confronted by a malevolent, unsettling being. Despite the character never identifying itself, some people, citing notable similarities, claim that it may be the physical representation of Satan himself. Now, upon meeting the mysterious creature, a dialogue box will appear with the text, I exist in the very fabric of reality. Do you want to challenge me? This is followed by a option for yes or no. Should the player choose yes, the being replies with, then, let's begin. The player is then transported into a series of maze-like rooms, each filled with pit drops, locked doors, keys, and traps. Now, the objective for the player is to progress through each room by either reaching the stairs to the next level or solving another kind of puzzle. Now, this can include answering riddles or choosing the correct door or pathways. The most well-known example is a level where there's four small cabins shown on the screen. A dialogue box appears and reads, Choose wrong and misfortune will befall your loved ones. Are you ready to play? Should the player ever make the mistake throughout the game, the screen will cut to black before showing one more detailed image of the demonic being along with a dialogue box reading, I am God here. <laughs> In what appears to be blood style writing, rumors pertaining to the game's alleged harmful effects begun to surface on the internet around the late 1990s. Players claim to have begun experiencing ongoing depression and dread shortly after losing and seeing the game over screen. Once prominent members of online forums who told such claims are thought to have died or flat out disappeared off the internet when they suddenly became inactive without warning. Now, heated discussions soon to dominate these forums for a short time, but the mystery never seemed to be getting any closer to being solved. Some wrote the whole thing off as just a tasteless practical joke. Others believe that viewing the image of the evil character after losing the game is what really causes the player to experience the misfortune as the game's antagonist promised. Some people began to speculate that it may be the eerie soundtrack that the game caused them, using some form of binaural beats. The music in the game is consisted of deep, buzzy noises and off-key melodies. The game had a remarkably unsettling soundtrack despite the composition being limited to 8-bit Game Boy sound banks. The game overscreen had a especially erratic, almost nauseating effect with very high frequencies that accompanied it. Rumor has it that this very track could somehow influence the moods and thought patterns of the player. Of all the tracks in the game, only the theme that plays when first meeting a demonic entity can be found on the internet today. Searching for playable ROMs or cartridges online is futile because <laughs> flat out none of them exist. In fact, most of those who played it directly hadn't sought out or looked for it, but rather stumbled upon it by accident. According to first-hand accounts, certain copies of the various Game Boy game titles contain misfortune in its entirety. The means for assessing it through these games vary but typically involve exploiting glitches or using cheating devices, although some have detailed what they had done to be a trigger for misfortune to start. Attempts by others using the very same methods 
has always failed, leading to some to speculate that this may not be the way to access it. Another common observation was many of the sprites in Misfortune had been copied from its host game. Misfortune has been integrated into the following games. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Pokemon Red, Spout's Adventures, Patchy Corette, and a teller, Marie JP. Now, here's my closing thoughts. Now, is this game like really cursed? Does a specter really bide within and snare innocence into its deadly games? Who knows? What I do know is that this game definitely exists. I also know what it can do. I never played it for myself, you see, but I know someone who did, a good friend of mine. Actually, we're closer than brothers and we told each other everything. He was the most enthusiastic, outgoing guy I've ever met like me. He was really into video games too. Sure enough, one day he told me he found this spooky new side of the hidden Pokemon game. <laughs> he showed it to me, and even back then, it gave me this odd feeling. Though, to be fair, I was always easily scared. Soon after, he started talking less and less. Later, he'd even ignore my calls or tell me that he was sick or busy when I invited him out. He became something of a recluse. I did sometimes get to see him at high school, but he rarely did spoke and snapped at me when I pried too much over why he was acting this way. About a month later, before he got off the train after school, he said goodbye to me for the first time in weeks. I never forget to look. I never forget the look he gave me that day. He was macho. No, he was the nothing gets to me type of guy. And his, he always masked his emotions very well. But now, he had a face that was filled with grief, like he was about to cry. He made me a promise. He made me promise him one thing before I left: that I never play that game. That was the last time we spoke. The next morning, they, they found his scratched, bloodied corpse hanging from his disassembled weight machine. The, poli the police concluded and managed to lift the 250 pounds of weights over his head, and it, the cord still attached and looped around his neck. I then reached it from the other side of the machine, causing a strangulation as the weight yanked the other side. Ugh. Anyway. I'm going to spare you the horrible details that was his death, but found in his hand, clutching inside was a makeshift noise or... <sighs> Personally, I don't believe that this was some ordinary suicide. If you're a collector or perhaps heard of the legend and want to experience for yourself, you should reconsider. Even though you may deny the, ex deny the existence of demons or curses or spirits, the misfortune that will befall you is very real. You have been warned.